Welcome. In today's lesson, we're going to be discussing the why of programming by reviewing mnemonics and having a discussion that relates to the following topics. First off, we're going to learn about casting. So we'll be discussing what casting is, and then we're going to move on to talking about how it relates to dynamic typing, which we learned in the previous video. Then it's on to integers, one of the most famous types in Python, and we're going to find out exactly what makes an integer an integer. And then we'll talk about floats, another important type in Python. And then we're going to talk about strings and discuss what makes a string type the way it is. We're going to talk about what the reaper function does, because a lot of times people think it looks similar to the normal output like a string, but there's a special difference we'll be covering. And finally, we'll end by talking about Unicode and encodings. All right, all that and more coming up now. Our first mnemonic is going to be a cast, one of those that you'll get when you break an arm and one that you've probably seen on one of your fellow schoolmates. And the reason I chose a cast to represent the concept of casting is because the words are so similar. So what is casting? Well, casting is when you convert a variable's value from one type to another. So in the previous video, we talked about types being these groupings of parameters. This is when you take some kind of a value and you change it so it fits into the other group of parameters. And this is done in Python with functions such as int, float, or string. And these are functions that we can actually wrap around the variable itself. And when we run them, run the entire line of code with the variable surrounded by this function, it will cast them. It will change the value so that they fit into a new type. Now I want to jump back and talk about dynamic typing and how it's related to casting. So under the right circumstances, casting can be triggered automatically in the background. When Python is confident that the operation that you want done requires one variable to be cast, it will do it automatically in the background. And that's essentially dynamic typing, like we learned about in the last video. So to build on our conversation about compile time versus runtime, a language is dynamically typed when it does not associate values strictly with its specific type. But it's designed to decide, in quotes, what the type of the value should be at runtime based on how you're attempting to use it. And, you know, for two floats to be multiplied, not a problem. A float and an integer, however, that is a problem. But it's not going to ever come up in your life because Python behind the scenes will just change them. It will cast them both to floats before doing the operation. All right, on to our next mnemonic. And for this one, I chose pool balls that you would find on a pool table or a billiards table. So the reason I chose this is because if you look at all of the billiards balls, each of the pool balls has a number on it, one, two, three, and so on up through nine. And that's a perfect way to think of an integer. An integer is a number, but it doesn't have a decimal place. It's not a fraction. It is a simple, single, countable number. So for example, negative 17, it is an integer. Integers can be negative. Zero, it is an integer. It's a single number. And then of course, 42, integer, but not 96.8, not one third. For our next mnemonic, we have a yummy, delicious root beer float. And the reason I chose it is because float like root beer float sounds a lot like float in Python, which is another type we are just about to learn about. So what is a float? A float is a number that displays the fractional part. So before, where we said 98.6 isn't an integer because of the 0.6, that is now a float. So what defines the type float? Well, it floats just like an integer, except now we can use the decimal point. And as soon as you add the decimal point, Python will use more memory. It will record more precision. So it can be important to use these at some points in your code, depending on what the program is. And it's important not to use them at times where you don't need that level of precision, because that's just going to use up more memory and slow down your overall code. So just remember that precision is floats. Simple counting is integers. Our next mnemonic is going to be a violin, and it will represent the type of string. And I chose violin for strings because violins are some of the most beautiful strings in the orchestra. So what is a string? Well, a string is usually what you would think of as a bit of text. It's something that would be displayed or exported out to somebody who is reading it. And it's always in these quotes. So Python knows that you want something to be a string when you use double quotes or single quotes. And you can use either. They both create strings. And the reason why you might want to use one over the other depends on if you're actually going to use a single or a double quote in the text itself. 
Another important concept is called escaping. When you escape out of a string, you're using this character, the backslash. It's a very special character in regards to being inside of the single or double quotes because it actually tells Python to back out of the next character, don't think of it as a string, and do something with it. Now, the reason I kind of keep that vague is we're going to learn that there's different things that come after the backslash, which mean for Python to take certain actions. And we'll kind of break that down later. But just remember that this character in particular, the backslash, when you see it inside of a string of text, it means something else is going on. It means you're breaking out of the string, and it's not just considered a backslash. And our next mnemonic is going to be the evil, the terrible, the grim reaper. And the reason I chose the grim reaper to represent the topic of reaper is because they sound the same and it's pretty obvious. So what does the reaper function do? Well, it prints out a statement that looks similar to the way you would talk, similar to a string, but it's not. The goal of the string function is to print something readable. But the goal of the reaper function is to print something that you could actually cut and paste back into code. So there's a lot of subtle differences between the reaper function and the str function. But a good way to think about it is that the str function will generally rely on cues that are more human, like putting spaces between words. It will use indentations in a way that's proper for printing and reading. But when you use the reaper function, you might get back everything squished together, a way that would look like an actual function that you could cut and paste into somebody else's code. And there's different use cases for when you'd want to print out something this way, but usually it's when it's going to be read back in by a computer, whereas the string function you want to be read by a human. And our final mnemonic for this lesson is going to be the wonderful, the magical, the hard to find unicorn. And the reason I chose the unicorn to represent the topic of Unicode and also other text encodings is because Unicode and unicorn you know, sound like they're two peas in a pod. So what is Unicode? Well, in Python 3 and above, which we're working with, 3.5, 3.6, Python is going to create a string. And default, behind the scenes, that string is encoded in Unicode. Now, Unicode is an international encoding standard that's used with different languages and different scripts by which each letter, digit, or symbol is assigned a unique numeric value that applies across different platforms and different programs. In a nutshell, this is a really good thing. It allows us to use a lot of strange characters compared to traditional English that you might get with Python 2, which is encoded differently. You might not be able to use um, like the two dots in other languages that are, what are they called, like umblas? You know the two dots that are sometimes in other languages that are like above the letter U? Umblats or something? Yeah. So it can let you use things like umblats. Wait. Umlauts. So it'll allow you to use cool characters like umlauts. Okay, so in summary, we first learned about casting with the mnemonics of a cast. And that is when you change the properties of the value inside of a variable from one type to another. And then we talked about how in dynamically typed languages like Python, this casting can happen automagically in the background. And then our second mnemonic was the classic pool balls that you'll see at your local pool hall. And when you see those, I want you to think about integers, the Python concept of a type where the numbers have no fractional part or no decimal part. And then our next mnemonic was the delicious root beer float, which represented the type of float. And a float is a number similar to an integer, but also does have the fractional part. So you'll have the decimal and then some amount of numbers to some precision after it. Then we learned about the viola, which is the mnemonic for strings. Now strings are human readable text and they have quotes around them, either double or single. We talked about how the backslash is a very special character in Python when used in conjunction with a string and how it can break out of what a string would normally be interpreted as to do special functionality that we'll learn more about later. And our next mnemonic was the evil Grim Reaper, and he represented the Reaper function, which had a goal of printing something not readable, but something meant to paste back into a computer. And then finally, we talked about the elusive unicorn and how it represented the topic of Unicode and encodings in Python. And we talked about how Python 3 is awesome because it uses UTF-8 or 
Unicode encoding so it can handle all sorts of fun characters. So stay tuned for our next lesson and we'll dive in and start looking at some examples. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.